The stage is set for the first big debate of election campaign 97. The mayoral chain for all the McGinnis. Belfast has its first national... ...first citizen. And the jury finds Timothy McVeigh guilty of the Oklahoma City bombing. and welcome. Dick Spring and Mary Harney will face each other in half an hour's time in the first television debate between the party leaders in the general election campaign. The Labour leader has said he'll be asking Ms Harney hard questions. The Progressive Democrat leader has again said she's certain her party will form the next government with Fianna Foyle. <laughs> Dick Spring re-emerged from Kerry this afternoon to issue a final go get him to his Dublin team and to prepare for tonight's TV debate. Since the election was called, opinion polls have brought little in the way of encouragement for Labour, especially in Dublin. But with no party achieving any real breakthrough, Dick Spring is sticking with the line that it's all to play for. Throughout the campaign, he has aimed his fire at PD policies, even today, Labour has a new poster on the issue of public service job cuts. Well, we're now very confused because the manifesto issued by the PDs last Friday week said they were going to shed 25,000 jobs in the public service as a matter of priority. Obviously, the rendezvous in the Green Isle Hotel where Bertie Hearn met Mary Harney said that was unacceptable. She now seems to be changing her mind. But we'll have another chance to clarify that this evening. He has also taken several swipes at Fianna Fáil leader Bertie Ahern, saying he has failed to answer important questions. Dick Spring himself encountered something of a banana skin with his comment that a vote for Sinn Féin is a vote for peace, words which were definitely not on the coalition's existing hymn sheet. He had one climb down on the issue of a debate with Mary Harney. As for major U-turns, there have been none yet, but some still believe the one to watch for is a change of heart over a PD Labour coalition. He says this isn't a runner. He's been well received on the hustings and managed to combine campaigning with his work in the north as Tónishta, an office the PDs say they will abolish. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and both Dick Spring and Mary Harney will be hoping to win voters out of tonight's head-to-head. Preparing for the showdown in her Dublin home today, Mary Harney may have felt a psychological edge given that Dick Spring only agreed to the debate last Thursday. Harney made it a central theme in the early stages of the campaign. The real election was about who the coalition partners would be, the PDs or Labour. But Labour delighted in a chance to pit Harney against Fianna Fáil's Mary O'Rourke. Spring said he would only debate with an agreed tarnisher in a potential Fianna Fáil-led coalition. That row failed to materialise. The early days were dull, but the taxation, currency and abortion issues were soon shouldered off centre stage by Harney's radical proposals to encourage single mothers to stay at home. We don't believe, for example, that single mothers should be encouraged to set up family units on their own. We believe that the state welfare system should encourage them to stay with their own families. Then there were the 25,000 public sector job cuts. The PDs were grabbing the headlines but sending Fianna Foyle into convulsions. A hastily arranged meeting between Harney and Bertie Ahern, combined with the PD efforts to tone down the two proposals, seemed to calm inter-party jitters. But it wasn't all sweetness and light. There were public mutterings by a dissenting Fianna Foyle TD about going into government with the PDs. He, in turn, earned a public rebuke from Ahern. In the polls, the PDs have only made significant gains in Dublin. And although one poll revealed significant support for the single mother's idea, Mary Harney's consistently high personal rating has in fact dipped. Tonight's debate could swing this increasingly tight election. With both parties desperately pitching for the floating vote, it should be an enthralling contest. The Fianna Foy leader, Bertie Ahern, has said issues should be kept to the forefront in the final days of the campaign. Mr Ahern also said his party would provide open government if returned to power. The June weekend when the whole system had to change. The Fianna Fáil leader began his day with an interview on the Pat Kenny radio show. Later on this, the start of the final few days of the campaign, Mr Ahern travelled to Galway. The party faithful were out in force, but the fine weather in Air Square brought many others to hear Mr Ahern's speech. We don't need a pane of glass, and particularly one that you can't see through, but we will be open. <laughs> As we head out into the last few days, keep the issues up front. We've developed the policies, developed the strategies. We didn't do it just with Fianna Fáil. 
We went to lend the bread of this country, and we met the experts wherever they were. Mr. Ahern has been strongly criticised by the government parties for the style of his campaign. But the Fianna Fáil organisers believe it's working for him. However, it remains to be seen if shaking hands can be turned into votes. And the Fianna Fáil leader had one other encounter today with his former colleague Moira Gagan Quinn, who this time round isn't on the hostings herself. Patricia has claimed that the mould of politics will be broken next Friday when an outgoing government will be returned to office for the first time in almost three decades. Mr. Bruton again said he would have to consider whether there should be further meetings between the government and Sinn Féin because of weekend events in the north. The Taoiseach's bank holiday began by meeting supporters in Athlone. Then he took a midday cruise on the Shannon with his wife, Finola. On board, he outlined how he would manage change in society, with all sections benefiting from the computer age. Farmers would gain from biotechnology, elderly people from advances in medicine. He said the Rainbow's tax plans would benefit everybody, and he repeated that he's going to be cautious about allowing further talks between government officials and Sinn Féin. In light of the fact that we've seen a threatening IRA action yesterday, I'm going to have to look very hard at authorising meetings in the future. But the channel of communication is there if the people on the other side want to use it for a genuine purpose. Later, he got a rousing reception in Kina. He talked about old Fine Gael Longford families, the Beltons and the McKeones, and predicted that history would be made on Friday. But for the first time since 1969, the Irish people will break the mould and put a good government back in office at an election. The Taoiseach called into a turf museum and walked the bog for a few minutes. Then he visited the tidy town of Arda, where he planted a tree at the Heritage Centre. Afterwards, he explained why he's so confident about victory on Friday. I think there's a mood to continue with change for the better in Ireland, a change for a more inclusive Ireland, to use the tremendous resources we now have to help the elderly, to help young people through information technology, and indeed to help revive rural Ireland. And I think that mood for taking charge of our future is running in favour of the Rainbow Government. Belfast has elected its first national...